Peace and love, YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe, share this video if you can. I must say that today's topic is like a double-edged sword. By that, I mean women who have no regard for life will use it um, for their benefit. And men will, can know this information in the case they wanted to try to fight against it. They'll know what an obstacle is that they have to fight against. So today's topic is one that I mentioned on the live that I did on Friday, which was the wife's ability to have an abortion without the consent of the husband. Now, I have to say that I do not give legal advice and neither am I an attorney. If you need legal advice, please seek out a lawyer. With that being said, let's get to it. All right, here we are. So we have here, let's go ahead and look at this. Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Planned Parenthood v. Casey, 505 U.S. 833-1992 was a landmark Supreme Court case regarding abortion in a plurality opinion. The court upheld the constitutional right to have an abortion that was established in Roe v. Wade. And I would suggest, guys, if you, if you can, go and research uh, the woman that was involved in this case. And uh, you'll find that she actually said that she was manipulated or coerced into uh, doing this. She didn't necessarily agree with it, but I digress. Go and look it up for yourself. But altered the standard for analyzing restrictions on that right, crafting the undue burden standard. Let's look and see what the undue burden standard is. The undue burden standard is a constitutional test fashioned by the Supreme Court of the United States. The test first developed in the 19th century is widely used in American constitutional law. In short, the undue burden standard states that a, a legislator, oh, I don't want to have to click on that. We're going to get to it anyway. Um, the undue burden standard for abortion restrictions. This case arose from the challenge to five provisions of the Pennsylvania Abortion Control Act of 1982. Among the provisions were requirements for wait for a waiting period, spousal notice, and for minors' parental con consent prior to undergoing an abortion procedure. In a plurality opinion jointly written by Associate Justices Sandra Connor, Anthony Kennedy, and David Scooter or Shooter. Let's look at Sandra too. Ugh, diabolical. The Supreme Court upheld the essential holding of Roe, which was the that the due process clause. Let's look at due process. The United States Constitutional, a due process is found in the 5th and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution, which prohibits arbitrary deprivation of life, liberty, or property by the government except as authorized by law. So, which was that the due process clause of the 14th Amendment protects a woman's right to choose to have an abortion prior to viability. Okay, so fetal viability or photo viability is the ability of a fetus to survive outside of the uterus. Okay, so before we continue, what I was getting from this with the 14th Amendment, um, let's actually read that. Well, well you know what, let's, uh, let's go back to the deprivate. So let's continue. The court overturned the Roe trimester framework in favor of the viability analysis, thereby allowing states to implement abortion restrictions that apply during the first trimester in pregnancy. The court also replaced the strict scrutiny standard review required by Roe with the undue burden standard under which abortion restrictions would be unconstitutional when they were enacted for the purpose of effect of placing a substantial obstacle in the path of a woman seeking an abortion of a non-viable fetus. Applying this new standard of review, the court upheld four provisions of the Pennsylvania law, but invalidated the requirement of spousal notification. Four, just, 
four justices wrote or joined opinions argued that Roe versus Wade should have been struck down while two justices wrote opinions favoring the preservation of the higher standard of review for abo abortions. Now, as you guys can see, right up here where it started saying pretty much, uh, so pretty much what we have here is it's saying that, there, that it's an undue burden that a wife should have to ask her husband before she have an abortion. And you see that, 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 that I would say that that is destructive to the family. If it's uh, uh, supposed to be a oneness that we're having in a relationship where a person is saying we are one, we make decisions together, but we don't have to make decisions as far as bank accounts. Now there's the vision within a household and a household divided will not stand. A kingdom divided will not stand. So you mean to tell me these important decisions like abortion is not something that's going to be jointly decided on or it doesn't have to be jointly decided on? And I think that this is one of those situations that favor women. Now, and I can and I can get people di disagreeing. If you disagree, put your disagreements in the comment section and maybe in the future we can um, get on live and we can discuss your agreement, your disagreements. But as it sits, I think it's destructive for the family. And it seems like there's a lot of laws that give women incentives to be able to destroy their own families. But let's see the background. And guys, please, this is Wikipedia. Um, if you want, go and read this case for yourself. It, it can be easily found anywhere. This is just Wikipedia gives a good uh, summary. So the background uh, in Casey, the plaintiff challenged four, five provisions of the Pennsylvania Ab Abortion Control Act of 1982, authorized, uh, authored by Representative Stephen Fiend, or Fiend, arguing that the provision were unconditional, unconditional. In Casey, the plaintiff challenged five provisions of the Pennsylvania Abortion Control Act of 1982, authored by Representative Stephen Freind, or Freind, I don't know, arguing that the provisions were unconstitutional under Roe v. Wade. The court in Roe was the first to establish abortion as a fundamental right protecting the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. The majority of Roe, the majority in Roe, further held that women have a privacy interest protecting their right to abortion embedded in the Liberty Clause of the 14th Amendment. The five provisions at issue in Casey are summarized below. Now I want to say, man, this, because that's crazy. How, how do you, so you, a woman has a privacy interest within her own family, apart from the interest that her husband has within this situation. That sounds, I mean, that sounds ridiculous to me. Let me know what you guys think about this. But let's go to uh, section 3205, informed consent. A woman seeking abortion had to give her informed consent prior to the procedure. The doctor had to provide her with the specific information at least 24 hours before the procedure was to, was to take place, including information about how the abortion could be detrimental to her health and about the ability of information about the fetus. You see, that's, that's, I would compare that to like saying they should take off the warnings or uh, on cigarette packets or that these companies shouldn't be forced to have to uh, create these videos to say, hey, this is what smoking does to you. And, but this is something that's a lot quicker and that can definitely kill women and studies have been able to show that it causes mental uh, stress. It causes uh, different types of depression, uh, suicidal thoughts. It can cause hemorrhaging. It can cause a list of different things. Now, I'm not a doctor and I can't give medical advice, but I would say study for yourself.
but I digress on that. Um, section 3209, spousal notice. A woman seeking a, a, an abortion had to sign a statement stating that she had notified her husband prior to undergoing the procedure unless certain expect, exceptions applied. Now, I'm sure that that, that, that protected the woman. <laughs> To protect her from not only making a bad decision for the family, but also if a woman said, "Okay, I'm going to sign this this notice saying, yeah, I don't want like he doesn't have the notice now. If he wanted to sue because she died, or if she had like a bad issue where she got very sick, she had some type of septic issue, who are they going to sue? He wasn't even there. He he couldn't even give his consent. Next. 3206, parental consent, minors had to give, had to get the informed consent of at least one parent or guardian prior to the abortion procedure. Alternatively, minors could seek judicial bypass in lieu of consent. Now, this is something that everybody already knows about. They'll, they can help your child to get an abortion at school if they want it to. And they, they don't have to tell a soul. If that child doesn't want to tell the family, then neither does the nurse or any of the administrators at the schools have to tell you. And I think that that really sucks. I think all the different ones that I just said suck because the first one tells the mother, hey, you, hey, this is what is going on. This is what may or may not happen. This is, it seems like that should be a basic medical procedure. Well, the beginning of it to tell you, hey, these are the dangers. This is what, this is what happens to the child. Are you sure this is what you want to do? It's pretty much talking to them to convince, to let them know, hey, these are all the dangers. And then the second one, hey, probably want to let your husband know. That way it doesn't affect your marriage. That way he'll know if you have, like, he'll know what to expect if the case be that you have some type of mental distress, mental duress. And then parental consent, I think that every child, well, everyone that, that would, well, anyone who would give a child an abortion um, should definitely speak to their parents. And then the last one, medical emergent, emergency definition. So uh, defining a medical emergency as that condition which on the basis of the physician's good faith clinical judgment so complicates the medical condition of a pregnant woman as to necessitate the immediate abortion of her pregnancy to avert her death or for which a delay creates serious risk of substantial and irreversible impairment of a major bodily function. So they, they pretty much try to get, get away from that. Let's look at that again. Medical emergency definition. Defining a medical emergency as that condition, which, on the basis of fit on the, and I, I I can I can understand why I'm stuttering on that because, on the basis of the physician's good faith, that just doesn't even sound right to me. Like as every physician, every doctor, every nurse is supposed to be helping life or ushering life. I mean, I, I would say that this is a. Uh, eugenics. This is a uh, euthanizing, um, well, not eugenics. I would say this is euthanizing children, but they're, they're, they're supposed to be saving lives. But let's go ahead down to the fifth one, 3207. B, 3214A, and 3214F, reporting requirements. Certain reporting and record keeping mandates were imposed on facilities providing abortion services. So now they don't even have to report it. Let's say Planned Parenthood um, in Texas was still doing abortions. They don't have to report that they're doing abortions. They can just say that they're still um, giving out contraceptives. They're still giving out advice as far as what they can do with their family. But I digress. We see the five. This is what they had tried to take or they have taken away with this uh, Planned Parenthood v. Casey case. But let's continue. Uh, the case was seminal one in the case was a seminal one in the history of abortion decisions in the United States. It was the first case to provide an opportunity to, over to overturn Roe since two liberal 
justices. William Brennan, let's look at him. And Thurgood Marshall. Come on, my Thurgood. Had been replaced with the Bush appointed justices. David Schulter and Clarence Thomas. Oh, that guy. I've been seeing him on all types of stuff. Ugh. Both were viewed compared with their predecessors as, what's that? Ostensible conservatives. This left the court with eight Republican appointed justices. Six of them had been appointed by Presidents Reagan and Bush. Reagan or Bush, both of whom were all known for their opposition to Roe. Finally, the only remaining Democratic appointee, Justice Byron White, had been one of the two dissenters of the original Roe decision. At this point, only two justices were obvious supporters of Roe v. Wade, in which I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't agree with Roe, Roe v. Wade. Harry Buckman, Arthur of, of Roe and John P Paul Stevens, who had joined opinion specifically of reaffirming Roe in the city of Akron, v the Akron Center of Reproductive Health in Thurbrot, was it? Thornbro, with Thurnbor, y'all got to get, get that one yourselves, v the American College of all right, Obst what's that, obstetrician and gynecologist? Yeah. The case was argued by ACLU attorney, Catherine Colbert, yep, no picture, for Planned Parenthood, with Linda J. Worth Wharton serving as co-lead counsel, Pennsylvania Attorney General Ernie Prate argue the case for the state. Upon reaching the Supreme Court, the United States joined the case as at amicus curiae, curiae and Solicitor General Ken Starr, hmm, I guess these don't have pictures on them, of the Bush administration defended the act in part by arguing the court to overturn Roe as having been wrongfully decided. So guys, that's pretty much it on that. Like, I didn't want to, I don't want to, um, if you guys want to get uh, more information on here, I would say um, there's a few different sites that you can find it on. Um, this is the one I chose to use. Um, <clears throat> but yes, as you can see, that's the case. And it's and it's way more than what I even said in the video. Like, and, and I think that it's, it's, is very destructive to the family. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I wanna have a discussion on this topic uh, if someone would like to. But as I said, um, in this case, uh, the, the wife is not, is not forced to have to tell her husband anything if she decided to do that. And the other four, don't forget those as well. So thanks for watching guys. Peace and love.